Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna work with some Dendrobium Phalaenopsis type or Bijubum, however you want to call them. Now these orchids have spent a lot on transport and my suspicion is they weren't really packed all that dry. Therefore, I have a serious bacterial rot infection. There were three Dendrobiums but I already did one and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take you along just for you to see how I go about cases like such because the good thing is these orchids are absolutely self salvageable. Now before we start I did talk about bad orders and what to do in case you receive orchids which are really not up to par so I'll link it down below and I hope that will be useful to you. In our case though we really need to do something with these orchids if we want them to have a good evolution. So first of all what happened? Well as you can see the leaves really do not look good. They're all mushy and this is actually whatever was best on the orchid. The other leaves were complete mush. They were already blackened and I just threw them away and I took the garbage down. They're not in the growth space anymore. These were still attached and I kept them on just so you see how they look like. So as you can see they are soft, mushy. They look like they are wet but inside the tissue. Whenever you have leaves which look wet and soaked like this, we are dealing with a bacterial infection. Sometimes we call it a bacterial rot. And this type of infection can affect leaves but also pseudobulbs. Now if we were to have monopodial orchids such as Phalaenopsis or Vandas, this would have been very problematic because the axis, the core of the orchid is formed by the leaves. Also, these orchids don't have water and nutrient storage devices, so it would have been a lot more tricky to resolve this if we were to have a Phalaenopsis or other monopodial orchids. In our case though, it's pretty easy because these are dendrobiums. They have canes and they store nutrients. They have a boost for the new growth. And even though not all of the pseudobulbs look good and some of them probably will have to be removed, overall we do have quite a lot of pseudobulbs not sure about the root system, but we'll find out. So first and foremost, we need to get rid of the leaves which don't look good. So this already fell, this will be thrown away, this will be thrown away. This one, there is no point in keeping it, you can see it's falling, this will be thrown away. These on the other hand, I might be able to salvage them, but I do need to cut the portions which are affected. In our case, even though we're dealing with such an advanced infection, it is in our best interest to save as many leaves as possible. Whatever healthy tissue remains of the leaf will photosynthesize and will actually feed the canes and the orchid. So I will try to save as many leaves as possible. In this case, we'll cut the affected portions, but we'll get to that. And in the second case, we can see we don't have much to work with this leaf. We cannot work with it, it's already yellow here. This yellow is caused by the infection and it will never reverse. You can see it already came off. This leaf on the other hand, we can work with it. I think if we cut it in the middle, we could actually work with it. On this side, we have a mushy cane. This cane, look at it, it's very flexible. It's also rotten. This cane will be completely removed. Actually, this one is rotten as well. So this whole division, we cannot save it. If the pseudobulb is mushy, there is nothing you can do about it. You cannot reverse the process. You cannot make the pseudobulbs healthy again unless you cut the affected portion, but my affected portion is right here. So I hope you can see how flexible it is. It's not supposed to be like this. So this portion, I cannot do anything about it, but the other one is certainly salvageable. So our main focus will be disinfection. First of all, I will disinfect my tray. I had the orchids on my tray and also we will cut the leaves and maybe the pseudobulbs. So I want no pathogens here. The problem with these bacterial rots and fungal rots is that the bacteria and fungal spores will be pretty much everywhere when you work with these orchids. So proper hygiene is step number one, very important when we're dealing with such cases. So I'm just gonna pour um, alcohol. I have 96 degrees alcohol here on my tray. I'm gonna spread it around. And that is the tray disinfected. I also changed my gloves. I don't really disinfect gloves because it's a hassle to put them back. If my hands sweat a little, uh, I just prefer to change my gloves. 
Step number two, prepare the solution we're gonna disinfect the orchid with. Alcohol is too strong for many orchids and you could actually damage the orchid tissue. So what I use is hydrogen peroxide, 3% that I purchased from the pharmacy. Now, you might see here it says 6%. In my region, I cannot find the big bottles of hydrogen peroxide. I only find these little puny bottles. So what I do is I buy 6%, which is more concentrated, I put it in this spray bottle and then I fill up this bottle with the same quantity of osmosis water. And then I pour the osmosis water or purified water in the bottle. And what I have here is a concentration of hydrogen peroxide, 3%. And that works great for me. It still fizzes, it still does its job. So this is the solution that my orchid will be sprayed with entirely. Of course, there might be other solutions on the market which are antifungal, antibacterial. I prefer hydrogen peroxide. I've worked with it for years and it's easy to purchase. It's not so expensive. But of course, if you're already experienced and you have your own solutions that you like, why not? The third thing that I did was to make sure I removed all of the dead roots. I removed the medium it came with. It was sphagnum moss with a little bit of bark. It had snails and the root system was not in good condition. So I cut everything that was dead. I only left the live roots. You can see not much. I also removed the leaves that could not be saved and I'm also keeping this leaf which is affected but I'm not going to cut it yet. I will also cut this pseudobulb. You can see it's already yellowed here but I can save the base. The base can give me new growth. When you have pseudobulbs which are already infected, it's a good idea to either remove them completely or remove to the affected part because it can actually travel through the rhizome to the other uh, pseudobulbs. So you can see mine stops around here. I'll cut it here most probably. But before I cut anything, I wanna disinfect the orchid. This orchid might be full of bacteria, full of fungal spores. I don't want them in contact with the cuts that I will make, so first of all, I'm going to spray hydrogen peroxide 3% on the entire orchid. This will kill bacteria, it will kill fungi and fungal spores. It will make sure that the surfaces do not contain pathogens. So I'm just gonna be liberal with this and spray as much as possible. Now, you might be hearing a little fizzing. This is absolutely fine. Hydrogen peroxide should actually fizz in contact with organics. As you can see, the leaf is already foaming here because this is affected tissue. So if your hydrogen peroxide fizzes, it's okay. If it doesn't fizz, it's expired. Don't use it. It's not going to do anything. After hydrogen peroxide, there is no need to rinse or do anything. After this reaction, all you'll have on the plant is water. Oxygen will be dissipated into the air. And what kills pathogens is actually this reaction, which produces the fizzing. Next, I need to sterilize my cutting tools if I worked with them on a previous orchid. And how I sterilize my tools is I keep them in alcohol. And then when it's time to use them, I flame them. If you're underaged, don't work with fire. Do not play with fire. You need parental supervision. I'm very serious. Alcohol makes everything catch fire. If a drop of alcohol ends on your hands and the flame goes there as well, it's not going to be nice. So do not play with this. Alcohol is very flammable. Be careful what you do. All right. I'm actually going to go on top of the sink to do this. Alrighty, sterilized cutting tool, sterilized orchid, sterilized tray means I can start cutting away the affected tissue. So whenever you cut infected leaves, you need to go lower than the affected tissue. You need to cut into healthy tissue. So as you can see, my leaf is affected right until here. But if you take a closer look, you can see the yellowing. So the infection spreads further down than what you see here. Therefore, I shall cut here. And it's not going to be a very clean cut because the leaf is large. But this leaf, if it's in good condition, it will help the orchid a lot. And then let's go to the pseudobulb. I told you I will cut up until here. And as you can see, we have clean tissue there. These portions shall be discarded, but we need to seal off the wounds because they're open and they're sensitive to pathogens in the air. 
Now to seal off the cut wounds, there are a few methods we can apply. My personal favorite is the cinnamon. This is ground cinnamon or cinnamon powder. You find it at the supermarket. It is what you put in cookies. The good thing with cinnamon is that it dries. Some say it does have antifungal and antibacterial properties. I don't know, I cannot test that, but what I surely know is that it dries. And if we can dry a layer of tissue, we can prevent pathogens from entering the orchid. So that's what we shall do. So on my cut wound here, I will put a layer of cinnamon. You have to be a little careful with cinnamon. Do not put cinnamon on the root systems because you don't want to desiccate the root system. On the leaf though, I am pretty liberal because the leaf is protected by a cuticle, so we will not actually dehydrate the leaf. I want to dehydrate the cut wound. There we go, this is the leaf. And then we have the pseudobulb, which I shall go about in the very same way. Actually, some people use wax on open pseudobulbs. Did you ever purchase dendrobiums and the pseudobulbs were cut and on top there was wax? That's their sealant. If you have wax, you can definitely use wax. I find it a bit laborious and I prefer cinnamon. So the top of the pseudobulb is sealed and soon enough it will dry out and the leaf is also sealed. We can carry on with repotting at this point. And there we have it, my dendrobiums are repotted. I didn't film the repotting because I do have videos about it, it's a little boring. If you wanna see how semi-hydro repottings go, just check the description down below. I'll link you to a repotting video, which deals only with that. And so to answer a few questions, yes, I do water my orchids after I repot them, particularly these ones. They have stumpy little roots. I want those roots to hydrate the orchid as much as possible because it will take a while until new roots are produced. These ones might actually produce new growth now, but the one in the back, no, he's just maturing this growth. This is the one that I didn't show you. So I'm not sure exactly how many good roots, sorry, new roots and when they will happen. Therefore, I want to maintain the existing roots hydrated. I will also place them in bright light. I will not keep them in the dark. I want the leaves, the remaining leaves to photosynthesize and produce sugars and carbohydrates actually for the plants. And of course, I will keep my eye on the leaves, see if the infection spreads anymore. If it does, I will probably cut the leaves. I'm hoping it doesn't, but for now, I think this is pretty okay. So this is a Dendrobium Kultana Fancy, such a beautiful Dendrobium. The one in the back is a Dendrobium Burana Sunday, like the ice cream, not like the day. And back here, the tag was broken. This is a Burana Green Star. Fantastic Dendrobiums, this guy is really tall. So hopefully they will be okay and they will grow nicely. I cannot wait to show you the blooms. All of them, as you can see, are mature. They have bloomed before. So yeah, fingers crossed for a speedy recovery, but that's how I go about an unfortunate orchid order. It's nobody's fault here. I'm not even sure if these orchids were wet when packed. They spend almost a month on transport, but I do believe I saved them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, you know the drill, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Down, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos of the sorts and not only and don't forget to turn on notifications just so YouTube lets you know whenever I post a video as far as I know YouTube has some issues at the moment you will not get notifications but hopefully soon you will and with that said I'll see you all next time bye